Hey y'all, my name is Keisha. I'm sure you can see from the topic of this video that I'm going to be discussing why I denounced my membership with Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. This video is simply me being obedient to what God has placed upon my heart. Um, now this video is not in any shape, way, form, or fashion to bash, to judge, or to put down on anyone. But I do just want to say that this message is going to be given in full truth. And it's going to be given in love. Because if I didn't love you all, if I didn't care about your souls, if I didn't care about any of that, I wouldn't be on here making this video. But in this video, I'm, I'm going to be discussing some of my personal experiences. I'm also going to be going over the AKA Ritual book, which can be found on Google if anyone is looking for it. Um, now, though... I'm going to be talking about AKA in specific, like going over their ritual book. This message applies to all D9 fraternities and sororities, also Eastern stars and Masons. This message is for you. God is calling you up out of those organizations because he does not get the glory, the honor, or the praises. Satan does. You're literally worshiping Satan. And God wants you to remove yourself from it. He wants you to remove yourself from those things. Um, when it comes to just like the idolatry, when it comes to the manipulation of scripture, the oaths, the kneeling, the bowing, um, all of those things from the chants and the hymns, those things goes against the word of God. Basically, the word of God is telling us not to do them. But then this fraternity or sorority basically is telling you to do it. It's asking you to do the very things that God tells us not to do or to only do to him and for him. So um, that within itself, it speaks, it speaks volumes because it shows how Satan is literally deceiving many people. And if you think about it, Satan is really here to deceive the whole world. He wants to deceive as many people as he can so that they can worship him. So they can just bow down and give him all of the glory. So he makes things look pretty on the outside. It looks pretty and you want to be a part of it. So he makes it look pretty. He make, he make it seem like it's all good and it's, you know, it's all sweet. But in actuality... He's really getting the glory from it. And that's what's happening in these Greek little organizations. So I'm just going to give a little bit of backstory for me before I get into the rituals. So I actually crossed in fall 17. Um, around this time, I would say that I was very lukewarm. I was lukewarm. Um, yes, I went to church. I read my Bible. I spent time with God. I did all of those things, but after doing those things, guess what I did? I still did what I wanted to do. I still did what Keisha wanted to do. I wasn't fully submitted over to Christ. I wasn't doing what he has placed me here to do. I was led by my feelings. I wasn't led by the Holy Spirit. And I was just very lukewarm. So let's just say I was deceived as well. And I end up joining this sorority. Um, and like many, you you kind of feel like something's not right when you're when you're going through this process. So certain things wasn't. I didn't feel a hundred percent on those. So I still kind of felt a little bit. I, I felt a little bit off. It kind of rattled on my spirit a little bit. So let's just say I end up joining this sorority. Now, though I couldn't remember all of the rituals, I couldn't remember those things in which we specifically did. I just remember feeling that I, I remember having that feeling of that just feeling uneasy, you know. So just fast forward, I end up joining the sorority, you know, how it is when you fresh off, you know, just fresh online and then you want to be out. You want to be out. You want to be on the yard. You want to be scrolling. You want to be doing all of those things. So. You know, that's how it, that's how it was. Um, then you put a lot of time, you put a lot of money, you put a lot of effort, you put a lot of things into this sorority. 
So that's kind of how it was, you know, the first few months of me being online. And then like months later, it came a time where I was barely around. And I'm sure some of my former line sisters, my old line sisters, that they could attest to this day, I was barely around. Um, I was always working when it came to just certain events and like really majority of the events, I was always working and I really couldn't just get off work. Um, I had bills to pay as well. So I couldn't just get off like I wanted to. It was always something that was stopping me from just being there. And then um, after that, I ended up having some health complications. So with, with having those health problems, it really just pushed me from being there in that, you know, in that, in those events and stuff like that. So I started to feel a certain type of way because it's like, okay, I'm an ego and I just want to be out. You know what I'm saying? I want to be online, out on, um, on the yard with my sisters and stuff like that. So I, I felt some type of way and I just didn't understand why I just couldn't, why every time it was something always conflicting me, conflicting, so I couldn't be there. So, um, that ha that happened, and it's just like God had to bring that back up to my mind because He was literally there was nobody but God, literally that was God. So God was just literally with me throughout that process, even though I was doing something that He didn't tell me to do something that goes against his word. Um, he was still there with me. And I just think that's so amazing because even in our wrong, like God still loves us regardless. Like that agape love, that that, un that, that, that unconditional love. And like, he was just still with me. And it's just like during that time, he was really like trying to communicate to me then because let me just say some things after crossing, like certain things, I just wasn't for. So it, it it further just read on my spirit. Like it further just bothered me when it came to like some of the morals and ethics, some of the things that I wasn't willing to conform to. So that also kind of kept me away. And it's just like with noticing all of those things, that was God speaking to me. Like that was God just showing me those things. But it's like, I wasn't really, I wasn't really noticing that then. I didn't notice that because I was just so focused on me. I was on, I was so focused on why I couldn't be there. You know what I'm saying? So that happened. Um, and it's just so amazing that God was with me there um, throughout that process. So we're going to fast forward on. Um, one day, I just want to give this story before I actually get into it. So one day I was just sitting on the couch, me, my, me and my husband. So we were on um, Facebook and this one girl, she was sharing how Greek life was not of, of God. In this specific post, she was talking about the Zetas and she was going back and forth with this girl who was a um, a part of that for, uh, sorority. So um, I was like, okay, well, maybe she's just talking about the Zetas. But then her other post, she started talking about um, AKA and like the cute doll. She just started naming all, you know, she had all of the stuff on there. She had the scriptures of how it wasn't of God. She had the ritual book, the same ritual book I have here. She had it there. And she was just showing how, you know, the kneeling and the bowing and the worship of Greek gods and all of this other stuff. And I was like, <laughs> no, baby, no, she's not talking about me. And I, I told my husband, I was just like, um, I didn't do that. She don't know what she's talking about because I didn't do any of those things. I didn't bow down. I didn't worship anyone or anything. I didn't do those things. And it's like, it's crazy because I got defensive. I got defensive over that. And even with her saying that and having the, the pictures and all of that up there, I didn't take the time out to go look it up. I didn't take the time out to go research it. I didn't. I just automatically just went into denying and being defensive of this sorority. So, um, that happened and then we just fast forward over i end up giving my life to christ and so at that point it wasn't about me it wasn't about how i feel i wanted to do what god had called for me to do and just just live for him so one day 
we were on this Bible study group. Uh, we was at, we were in this Bible study group. It was some girls and I. Um, this, at this time, God had began to remove people from my life and place certain people into my life. So these girls, you know, God has brought them into my life. And I'm, I'm thankful for them. So we were on Bible study and um, a Bible study call. And the topic of AKA came up. And we were basically saying how it wasn't of Christ. And I wasn't really just into it then but once i got off the phone um with them i ended up praying that night and just just asking god to reveal the spirit that was operating behind this um for sorority so and i just wanted to see i just wanted to know like were these things true i wanted to know like if it like what is it you know what i'm saying what was it because I truly didn't know. And it was just like, okay, this is the second time, you know, this stuff has came up. So I prayed. And just as sure as I prayed, God had revealed it to me. And just so you all know, I couldn't remember hardly anything of what we did for the rituals. Um, I couldn't remember. And God had to bring certain things back to my mind. And as he started revealing those things and just bringing things to my mind about the things that we said, the things that we did. And I'm just like, like, I'm like, wow. Like, I literally felt so bad, y'all. I, I really felt so bad. Like, I was so shook and it just hit me to my core. It hit me, it hit me to my core to know that the things that I did, the things that I said, I did the very thing that the word of God says not to do. And I did those things for this organization. And when God just starts to reveal those things from me, and I'm just like, like, I'm hurt. So then he was like, what are you going to do now, Keisha? And I was like, Lord, I'm going to give it up. <laughs> I'm going to give it up. Like, at this moment, there is nothing going to stop me from getting, from spending eternity with Christ. So it's just so important that you have to be willing to give up any and everything for Christ. So I gave it up. I gave those letters up. Yes, the enemy tried to test me. He tried to bring to my mind all of the money, the time, all of those things that I put into this organization. But I had to rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And I had to do what God had called for me to do. He asked for me. He asked me what I was I going to do. And I had to give it up. So I did that. And it hurt. It hurted me because, you know, just taking everything out, removing everything from your home and just doing away with them. Like, like this is the end of this. You know what I'm saying? So I did that. And um, so I ended up denouncing. I denounced my letters. So every time since then, every time I see anyone who posts things about Greek life, or I see them scrolling and just wearing a pair of net and all of those things. I always say a prayer. I literally, I always, I always, pray, I pray for you all. So I pray. And this specific time I prayed, I was on Facebook and some of my old line sisters, they were like having out having their fun and, you know, just doing all the scrolling and stuff like that. And I was just like, Lord, forgive them. Forgive them like, Lord, they don't know who they're worshiping. Like Satan has literally deceived so many of them. And because some people don't know. Some people truly don't know. But some people know. Some people know that it's not of God and they still become a member. So it's just like, Lord, for the ones that don't know, like, Lord, I pray for them. And he replied back to me in like a split second. And he was just like, Keisha, what good is it for me? To open your eyes. To reveal those things to you. And you not warn them. And it's just like. Y'all I had got chills. And it was just like whoa. And I was like you're right. I have to warn them. I have to warn them. That they're literally giving saints and all the glory. They're literally worshiping him. So that's what led me to make this video. And God has also given me dreams to confirm that this is what he wants for me to do so i'm here to warn his people that of the dangers of being a part of this sorority any sorority or fraternity 
But first, I want to start off with this scripture. And this scripture comes from Leviticus chapter 5, verse 4 and 5. And it reads, Or if a person swears, speaking thoughtlessly with his lips, to do evil or to do good, whatever it is that a man may pronounce by an oath, and he is unaware of it, when he realizes it, then shall he be guilty in, in any of these matters. And it shall be when he is guilty in any of these matters that he shall confess that he has sinned in that thing. So I gave that scripture to say that many of us, we, we, we've we taken oaths thoughtlessly. So we're not really thinking about what we're doing. But once we're made aware of that thing, we're now guilty of it. So once we're guilty of it, we must confess it. Now, we all know what good is a confession if you're not going to walk away from it. If you're not going to walk away from that very thing, what good is it to, to confess it? So many of us has taken oaths. We've done things thoughtlessly, ignorantly, like we, we don't even know because we were deceived. So once you're aware of it, you're now guilty of it. So once you continue this video, you now have came into the knowledge of the things that you possibly didn't know before. So now you're going to be guilty of it. And with being guilty of it, you now have to confess it to our father. And you have to change. You have to, at this, at this point, at this moment, once you realize it, you have to choose who are you going to serve because you cannot serve two masters. So it is going to be Satan or it's going to be God. You're either choosing to walk in darkness with darkness or you're choosing to walk with light, in light. So now is the time to stop the video, to pause it, to come back when you're ready. But come judgment day, you will not be able to plead ignorance if you watch this video. It's not the time to clean it up to fit how you feel. It's not a time to try to flip it and do all of those things or clean it up. But you simply have to turn away from it. So I first want to start off from the first page of the ritual book, which is basically the introduction. And in the introduction is basically saying this is a spiritual matter. It says here, because our rituals represents the spiritual foundation of the sorority, they should be reverent and held in the highest esteem. So this letting us know that, hey, we're not just dealing with the physical things, but we're also also dealing with the spiritual things. Now, we know in Ephesians 6, it, it says that we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. We don't have flesh and blood enemies, but there are things up in the unseen world. So we're literally battling things that's up in the spirit. Everything that we're going to be doing, we're gonna I'm going to be discussing today. We have to look at it from the spiritual standpoint. It's not just the physical thing. So we know how powerful the spiritual realm is. We know that. So just keep that in the back of your mind as we go through this ritual book. So I first want to talk about the idolatry within this sorority. Now we know idolatry is basically the worship, the service, the devotion rendered to a false God or material image. Basically that material image as if it were God. So let's see here on page 23 of this ritual book is the setting of the room, basically how the room is set up. It says on the table covered in white is a huge white candle intertwined with ivy representing the founder, Zorro Ethel Hedgeman Lyle. So we see here we have the material image of Ethel set up in the room. You will see as we actually, and when I go through the rituals further, how we knelt before this image multiple times and we also bow before it and we all know what happened to the children of Israel because of their idolatry we know that the Lord severely punished them he actually wanted to destroy them but he didn't destroy them because Moses was pleading on their behalf but he severely punished them for worshiping idols for worshiping other gods we already see here that hey our father does not support this he does not like the idolatry. He speaks about idolatry so much throughout the Bible. So we know that it's something that he does not support. 
But then we also know that the word of God tells us to flee from idolatry, to keep ourselves away from idols. And we did not do these things because basically there's an idol up in this room. We were a part of the idolatry. We were kneeling. We were bowing. We were taking oaths in front of this image, this material image of Ethel. So we know what, hey, we were in the wrong. The word of God also says in Leviticus chapter 26, verse 1, do not make idols or set up carved images or sacred pillars, or sculpture stones in your land so that you may worship them, for I am the Lord your God. So he is telling us, don't set these things up. Don't worship and bow down to these false gods. I'm your God. You're supposed to only do that to me. You're supposed to only do that to me, but we were doing it to these false gods, to these material images. But then we're going to just go on. We're going to go to the next point. And then this point is basically showing how the manipulation of scripture, basically how AKA took out what they wanted to take out. And then they put what they wanted to put in for their own agenda, which goes totally against the word of God. But we're going to go to it. And here on page 24, it is a prayer and it says, let us pray. And then it says, repeat after me. So we as the candidates are basically repeating this prayer. You have to remember like in the beginning where it says this is spiritual. And we know that our words hold power. Literally, the, the power of life and death is in our tongue. So we have to be careful what we speak. Because the word of God says that we will be held accountable for every idle word that we speak. So even with saying this prayer, we can say, okay, well, I didn't mean it. Girl, I was just saying it just to say it. I didn't mean it. That doesn't matter. What matters is that you said it. So now you're going to be held accountable for it. But let's just continue. It says here, open then my eyes, O God, that I may behold the wondrous works of this great organization. So we're just going to stop there because the prayer is pretty long. So we're just going to read that little snippet. And I'm going to discuss that. So it's saying, open my eyes for this, for the works of this organization. Not open my eyes so that I may be flee from the hands of Satan. Not open my eyes for those things, but open my eyes so I can work for your organization. That's what, that's what you're praying for. But the word of God says in Acts chapter 26, verse 18, to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. So again, the word of God says, okay, we're going to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness. They may turn from the power of Satan so that they may come be with me. They may come under my power. But then this prayer is just basically saying, open your eyes so you can do the stuff of this organization. And then we already know like, hey, this is a Bible verse. Remember I said it was manipulation of scripture. So this scripture, this it actually comes from Psalms 119 verse 18, which says, open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. So they took out, out of your law and they put in works of this great organization. So you're basically manipulating the scripture. You're basically taking things out and adding things in. Let's see what the word of God says. And Revelation chapter 22, verse 18 through 19, it says, I want everyone who hears the words of this prophecy of the book. If anyone adds to them, God will add to him the place described in this book. If anyone takes away from the words of this book of prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. So the word of God says, okay, you add to my word, I'm going to add to the plate. You take away from my word, okay, I'm going to just take from the tree of life and the holy seed that I've described in this book. Keep playing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you what I'm doing. So God, he telling you, don't do it. AKA did it. Which goes totally against his word. And then as you think deeper, this prayer is to God. 
in the Jesus name and everything. Now, many people will see this prayer. Remember in the beginning, I was just saying, okay, well, I felt a little bit eased, but once you hear God in something, you just like, okay, well, it's, it's a little bit good. It's God somewhere up in this. You know, we're glorifying God, you know, somewhere up in this. So it's just like, just because God's name is attached to it, just because they put God right there, his name upon it, doesn't mean he's in it. That doesn't mean he's getting the glory from it. So that's just what this prayer is. It is a prayer of manipulation. It is an unholy prayer because this prayer is not holy at all. It's not holy. See, they, they, they just attached God's name to this. He attached God's name to that, but God is nowhere up in it. Nowhere. So then on this next point, you're basically going to see where we bow. And you remember I was saying in the beginning how we bow to the material images and all of those things. So here on page 26, it says, to our founders, we bow. Candidates bow their heads. So here, you know that we're not bowing to God because it says our founders. So we were literally bowing to the founders. And in 2 Kings 17 and 35, it said, do not worship any other gods or bow before them or serve them or offer sacrifices to them. Again, the word of God says, don't bow. Don't bow to these gods. I am your God. You are only to bow to me. But let's look further into what the word of God says. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 5, it says, You must not bow down to them or worship them, for I am the Lord your God. I am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affections for any other God. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected. Even children in the third and fourth generation of those who reject me. Wow. So the word of God says, don't bow down. Don't worship him. I am a jealous God. God said he don't have time to be dealing with you and your affection for any other God. He's not going to deal with it. He told you that. He he's telling us that there. So then he goes on to say, I lay the sins of the parents upon their children. So for your sins, your children are going to be punished for it. The entire family is affected. Your third and fourth generations. So what we're doing, what you're doing, what everyone is doing, just think about it. When you're sinning, it affects your whole family. It affects your third and your fourth generation. Your kids, their kids, kids, their kids, kids. It affects us all. It affects everyone. Just think about it. For the things our parents did, it affects us. Those generational curses, those things that we're passing down generation through generation through generation. Just think about that. Think about it. Look at how you're affecting your kids from the choices that you are making. You're making and it affects your kids. So then it goes on to say, are you willing to be submissive in every way? And subjugate yourself to the highest authority. Now we see here, we already know submissive basically means coming out of the will, basically placing someone else's will above yours, ab above the will of God's as well. So you're basically being submissive to this person, basically to their highest authority. And we already know that God doesn't get the glory. Their highest authority is in God. It is Satan. Of course, Satan's not going to put his name right there. That's why he put the highest authority. Because if it was God, he would have just said God, right? Right? But they didn't say God. They said highest authority. Satan knows if he would have put his name right there, a lot of people would have got up and went out. So he did that to deceive people. He deceived many. He know ain't nobody going to just sit there and worship him. So he got to trick people into doing so. So you're basically saying, okay, well, you're going to agree and be submissive in every way to their highest authority, Satan. So you're basically saying, okay, whatever Satan wants, I'm going to do. Whatever he say, okay, it's, it's a go. You know what I'm saying? So that's basically what you were saying. But then it says here, if you go on down, it says, what proof do you have? So now we need some proof. They want some proof. Like, what, what you going to do to show me that this is what you mean? Let's see if you really about that life. So it says here on page 28, 
I show my submission by kneeling. By kneeling. Again, we're kneeling. And how many times have we knelt? About three or four. About three or four. We, we have knelt about a good bit of time. So, again, we're kneeling. Submission. We're kneeling. It's a sign of submission. But let's just continue on. And then, on this part, it's basically where we're taking the oaths. And we're going to kneel again to take these oaths. So on page 32, it says, Candidates kneel and take the following oaths. Now, we already know what the word of God says about oaths. It says that your yes be yes and your no's be no. Anything other than that is from the evil one. So we know, we see here, it's clashing. Because the word of God said, let your yes be yes. I shouldn't have to take no oath. But AKA requiring you to take this oath. But let's read it. It says, I, then you repeat your name, do solemnly promise to keep secret the manner of the initiation, pledge and obligations of, and then it says the sorority, AKA. And then it goes on to say that you're going to stand by AKA in every undertaking to render assistance to any soror at any time and to refrain from any expression of ill will. I shall keep in my heart these words, set a guard over my mouth, Keep watch over the doors of my lips. Now, this is also a Bible verse. I just knew this came from Psalms. So, I end up Googling it, and it, it is a verse from Psalms. Psalms 141 and 3. Now, they didn't change the scripture. It's basically the way in which they use the scripture. So, they're basically saying, set a guard over my mouth so that you won't reveal the secret man of your initiation. Don't tell nobody what you went through. Don't, don't do that. Don't speak ill will against the sorority, against your sorority. Don't do that. But just ask yourself, why do I have to keep secret my initiation? Everything that I do should be to glorify our Father up in heaven. People should see the light that's to put me and they should be able to glorify my Father up in heaven. So if I'm doing something in darkness... Like, that should let us know that, hey, this is from Satan. God tells me that everything I do should be to glorify him. And if I'm glorifying God, what is, what is the reason for me to keep secret? The word of God said the secret things belong to the Lord. The secret things belong to him. So what is it that we're keeping secret? See, again... Satan wants you to keep this secret because he know if people begin to speak, to speak ill will, to speak out. See, this is considered ill will, what I'm doing. So when people begin to speak, it exposes him. So he know he's not going to get as many people. Now, some people are still going to go because he's just a mastermind in deceiving people. So some people are still going to go for it. Um, but for some people, they're going to be free. They're going to be free. They're not no going to be in held in bondage. They're no longer going to be walking in darkness. But he don't want that. So he wants you to keep it secret. But then we're just going to continue to the next point. And in this next point, it's basically saying, repeat after me. By asphyxiating my signature in this book, I, then we said our name, join the hands and hearts of those sororities of, a.k.a., who continually strives to capture a fair vision. She then signs the uh, signs a chapter initiation record book. Now, this is one of the things that I could not remember, y'all. Remember, I was just like, okay, I can remember some of the things that we did up in these rituals. See, this is one of the things that God had to just bring back to my mind and remind me of what I did. And he told me, he said, Keisha, when you sign your name up in that book, you sign yourself over to Satan. You signed your name over to Satan. And y'all, I felt bad because it's just like, ain't no way I did this. But we have to remember in the beginning, it said it's spiritual. So when you just think about when you sign your name in that book, it's spiritual. It's not just a physical act, but it's something that's happening up in the spirit. And remember, like we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. We're not. So he knows things going to happen up in the real fight is in the spirit. 
It's in the spiritual realm. So just think about this. Satan needed our signature, basically. And we know, like, unholy spirits, the demons and all of them, they don't have access to us, but we have to allow them access. So when we did these rituals, we're participating in all of those things. We're signing our name. We're basically opening up doors. We're opening up portals. We're allowing them to come in. We're allowing all of those spirits to walk with us for this lifetime. We're allowing them to enter in. Now, we're not in control. We're not in control of what comes in. We're not in control of that. So just think about the, some of the things that you may be going through in your life right now. You may be like, it feel like something is hindering your walk. Something like you is preventing you from getting to where God wants you to be. Just think about it. It's what you have attached to you. It's the sorority that you have attached to you. It's those doors that you've opened up. Those spirits that you have allowed in. When you sign your name in that book, you basically say, okay, Sadie, you have me. You have all of me. I submit myself to you. That's what you did. That's what you did. You submitted yourself to him. You pledged. You took it. You've taken the oath to Satan. Their highest authority. Remember, because it's not God. So it's spiritual. But then up in the spirit, you're trying to fight up in the spirit. Things are going on. But guess what? Satan, just like this. I have her. She's mine. Like literally, she's mine. Do you do you not remember signing your name in that book? Hello? In that in that dark room when you pledged and you you took the oath and then you signed your name in that book? You signed yourself over to me. You are mine. So that's basically what you did. Just think about in the physical here. Just think about here. When we're going to get a background check or something, or we need our credit check ran or something like that. Don't we have to give them a signature? We have to give them a signature because they need that legal right. They, ha they have to have legal access to do that. See, say that he needed that legal access to you, so he needed your signature. That's just further it because you already opened up doors from all of the other things that you said and just really just participating in the, in the ritual. So it's serious. And then if you think, just think, ladies, Other, other young ladies are looking at you. They see you and they want to be a part of your sorority. So just think about it. Every young lady that you recruit in, everyone that you bring in, you're handing them over to Satan. You're recruiting them over to Satan. Because they're, they, they don't know that they're worshiping him. They don't know that he's getting the glory out of those things. They don't know that. But... Their blood will be on your hands as well. Their blood will be on your hands as well. But let's just continue on. So now we see here on page 35, it is a prayer. So we remember we opened up with the prayer, the unholy prayer that it was praying to God to. We opened up with that prayer. But this prayer is to seal it. You basically said your oaths. You said all of those things. Now it's time to seal it up with this prayer. And we can see here, boom. This prayer is prayer is praying to eternal spirit. So you just have to ask yourself, who is this eternal spirit that I'm praying to? Because you're praying to an eternal spirit. It's not God. And we know we're only supposed to be praying to God. We know that. But then again, we prayed this prayer. The prayer that goes against the word of God. Praying to another God. Little G God. Eternal spirit. But anyway, let's just continue to the next point. On page 39, it's basically a pledge. And God had to remind me of the pledge. He reminded me of so many things, y'all. Like, But he reminded me of this pledge. So we said this pledge in every chapter meeting. So every chapter meeting, we said this pledge. And it reads, to thee. O Alpha Kappa Alpha, we pledge our hearts, our minds, our strengths to foster their teachings, to obey their laws, and to make thee supreme to serve to all mankind. O Alpha Kappa Alpha, we greet thee. So, 
this is letting us know here we're greeting alpha kappa alpha god had to show me that when we said those things in every meeting we were basically opening up doors we were summoning the spirit of aka and inviting it up in the meeting because you're greeting the spirit of aka you're pledging your hearts your minds your strengths to aka but how could you be a true follower of christ and give all of those things to Christ because in the word of God, it says in Mark 12 and 30, and you must love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind and all of your strength. So how could you pledge the same things to AKA when God is only asking, for you, asking you to give those things to him? There's no way possible. There's no way possible you can give all that to God and then give it to AKA. Because when you pledge and when you took that oath, and when you submitted and you did all of those things, that oath was basically saying, okay, I agree with everything that this sorority stands on. I agree with it. So that's what you did. So there's no way possible you can just dedicate these things and say, okay, I give all these things to this sorority, but then also give these things to God. There's no way possible. No way possible. Then it goes on to talk about the deepest mystery of the um, sorority, um, basically learning about the symbols, the handshake and all of those things. Um, so I just wanna say, everyone everyone knows that your Chris says everything about you, your Chris. So here I'm gonna attach AKA's Chris. Now keep in remembrance when I said that this applies to all Greek letter organizations because they all are basically like the baby orgs of Freemason. So we see here on AKA's crest, we see the same handshake, the same Freemason handshake upon your crest. And then as you see upon the bottom, you see this little guy who's like he's carrying an earth or something on his shoulders? That's Atlas. So Atlas was actually punished by Zeus. And his punishment was basically to carry the heavens upon his shoulders so they would not come to earth. Now, being a follower of Christ, you have to think, how can God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven if you have Atlas in the way of it? How can God send out blessings if you have Atlas here stopping them from reaching earth? This is on your crest. This Titan is on your crest. Then you have to ask yourself, why is this on my crest? Because it says everything about you. But this is on your crest. There's no way possible that this is glorifying God. No way possible. So I'm just going to stop right there. I'm just going to stop right there. And I just want to say, I just want to say this. God is calling you up out of those organizations. He, he don't want you to continue to walk up in darkness. He loves you so much. He do like, he do not want you to perish. He don't, it's going to hurt him. He's going to hurt him to send his people to hell. It's going to hurt him so much. So that's why he's asking his people to turn away from this. Turn away from it. You no longer have to walk in darkness. You can walk with light. God, literally, you could be that one today. Because let's not forget that he left that 99 for that one. He did it for me. Today, you can be that one. Just remember, we as followers of Christ, we don't flow with the way the world flow. We know that the world supports Greek letter organizations. It's in movies, it's in shows, celebrities. They support it, Freemasonry, all of that. They support that. So we cannot be what the world want us to be. We cannot conform to the patterns of this world, but we must be transformed by the renewing of our minds. God set us apart. So as we look 
at these organizations, we see, okay, well, hey, the world is flowing this way. So this must be the broad path. The broad path that the Bible speaks about that leads to destruction. That must be that broad path. But we have to stay on that straight and narrow path. That straight and narrow path that leads to eternity. Because God had to show me, he had to show me that there is no way possible I was going to get to heaven and be a part of that sorority. He, like he showed me that, hey, if I would have passed away in that moment, in that time, I was going straight to hell, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. None. There was nothing I could do. There was nothing I could say because his word is going to stand. It's not about how I feel, but it's about him. It's about bringing glory, honor, and praise to him. It's about bringing people into the knowledge of Christ. And let's just speak about the hazing. Yes, the hazing, because we know hazing goes on. It's on the news. It's on social media. It's everywhere. Let's just speak about the hazing. Just think about what you do to your fellow brother or sister. Think about the words that you speak upon them. Just think about those things. Just think about how your words tear them down. Ask yourself, is that of God? In Matthew, it says what you do to the least of them, your brother or sister, is as if you're doing it to Christ. So just think about everything that you do, everything that you say, you're basically doing it to Christ. You will be held accountable for the things you do. You will be held accountable for the things you say. So just think about that before you before you talk down on someone, before you tear them down, before you call them a GDI, just think about the word of God. The word of God says a tree is known by its fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit. A bad tree cannot bear good fruit. What does your fruit say about you? There's no way possible you can be a follower of Christ and conform to the things that this organization is asking you to do. And people cannot say, okay, well, God told me to join this sorority. God told me to join this fraternity. No, he did not. God is not going to take you to do the very thing that he's telling us not to do. He's not going to put you in that situation. Oh, well, God told me to do this so I can bring light to this sorority, so I can bring light to this fraternity. No, he did not. God never told any of his people to join this fraternity or any sororities. God didn't tell you that. So just think about what you're doing, ladies. Like, just really think about the reason why you joined this sorority. Was it for sisterhood? Fellas, was it for brotherhood? Because God has given us sisterhood and brotherhood. We don't have to join a sorority or fraternity for that. Is it for community service? Because we can do community service. We are to serve one another. We are to help build the body of Christ up. So we don't need a sorority for that. If it's a network to get to know people, God can provide those things for us. So we don't, we don't need the sorority to do that. Are many people joining because of their moms, their dad, just to keep it in the family, just to keep it going? Just think about that. That's not the reason to join. And this brings me to my next point. Some people say, Okay, well, my pastor and my mom, they all are a part of these sororities, these fraternities. It must be right. But they're not. They're not right. Because the thing that they are a part of goes against the word of God. It's pure evil. See, it looks good, but it's not good. And I'm not, I'm not here to say, okay, well, your mom, your dad, your pastor are bad people because they can be genuinely good people. But what they are a part of is pure evil. So there's no way possible you can be a true follower of Christ and be a part of any Greek letter organization. We have to remember that God's word is going to stand. It's going to stand forever. It's not going to change. We have to mem remember that though they are pastors, they are first lady, deacon, deaconette. They all are susceptible to sin. They all are. They all at some point, shape, way, form, or fashion have been deceived. We have to keep in our minds, we have to keep this in our minds, that Jesus Christ is the example. He is the example. No one else. No one else is the example. So we must follow Christ. And we can see here that this organization, this sorority, is not founded upon Christian values or principles. Which ones? 
Because everything I went through, and I could go through many more things that shows you how this, it goes against the word of God. God was not the foundation of this. Ask God to show you the spirit that's operating behind these fraternities and sororities. Test every spirit by the spirit. And he will show you that he's not the spirit that's operating behind it. So you really have to ask yourself, what, what makes you think that the, these organizations are basically doing the works that are pleasing to God? The word of God says God is light and there's no darkness up in him. So there's no way possible we could be doing all of these things up in secret, up in darkness, and think God is somewhere up in it. He's not. If you really just think about the poem, just think about the poem that many of us, I'm pretty sure in different fraternities and sororities that you all had to remember the poem Invictus. We say the words of that poem, but we're not even paying attention to what it's really saying. But just think about it. Just look at those words. Out of the night that covers me, black as a peak from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. Not God, but gods. And then at the end, it starts to say, it matters not how straight the gate, charge me punish the stroll. I am the master of my faith. I am the captain of my soul. Think about that. It matters not how straight the gate. But but don't the word of God says that the straight and narrow path is what leads us to eternity? Think about what you're saying. You sing all of my love. Fellas, let's think about that. Ladies, you say all of my life, I work hard for AKA. Think about that. Now, many people may say, she's crazy. She don't know what she's talking about. She don't know. But I promise you, just go to God. Go to God with a sincere heart. And I promise you, I promise you, he's going to reveal these things to you. He's going to let you know. But I just pray that the Lord softens your heart. I pray that he removes the scales from your eyes so you, you no longer walk in darkness. I pray that he shows you the truth. And I pray that he gives you the strength to remove yourselves from these organizations. I pray for you. I'm here for you. Am I expecting you to end it right now? No. Am I expecting you to leave these organizations right now? No. But just remember that our Lord, our Father, He wants you to remove yourselves from it. He wanted me to come and give this message so you could see that He's not getting the glory in it. So I'm going to attach my information to this video. I'm going to attach it so you can reach out to me if you need to. I'm here for you. As your sister in Christ, I am here for you. This is a process. It's going to be hard, but I'm here for you. So I love you all. And I do thank you for watching this video. And most importantly, Jesus love you.